Okay, take a look at the Rydler 4K and 3 channel dash cam. So here is the main unit, and that is the 4K camera on the front. We got our mounts on the top, it looks like our speakers. We got a power on the side, TF. We got our port for the rear camera. And now on the bottom, we got our navigation buttons, and this is our reset hole right there. Now the cool thing about this one is this camera right here. So we can run that into the cab. We can get that to move up and down. So whatever orientation works best for you, you can use that. You can use this as your rear camera if you want to. If you don't want to run the rear camera all the way to the back, you'll have something that'll work right out of the box right away. It's also great if you're driving with passengers or anything like that and you want to have something pointing into the cab. I do like that they have the button markings also on the bottom of the camera so that you know exactly which button does what. And I also have to say, this is a very nice feeling plastic on here. So they were not holding back when they made this. Here we have our wired in power supply. So if you don't want to have to worry about plugging and unplugging that every time, you can actually wire this directly to the car. And they actually have this fully labeled, which is great. And it is labeled correctly. So the red is the accessory. So this is going to be when you turn the car on and off, it'll supply power here. Yellow is the battery. So this is constant power. And then black is the ground. And it does say this has low voltage protection. So this will turn off before it drains the battery, which is excellent. It's a USB-C plug that goes to the camera, but this is also angled. So when we plug that in, we can run that directly up. We don't have to have this big pigtail sticking out the side. And this is what I really like about these Rydler cameras is they give you so many different options for powering the camera. So you have a USB-A to USB-C plug, so we can power it if you have a USB plug in your car. We also have a car outlet adapter, and that has a USB-A port in the back, so you can use this for powering the camera as well as getting an additional USB-A port, or you can just hardwire it. So you can literally use whatever is most convenient for you. This is the rear camera. And the thing I like most about this is that we can rotate that back all the way towards the rear of the vehicle. So if you're driving a truck and you need to stick it on there, you can still have that pointing directly at the back. So this is the correct way to make a rear camera. It comes with a 3M double stick adhesive. So this is very good stuff. And it comes with an extra pad just in case you want to remove it. Got a nice long cord with a 3.5 jack that will plug into the side of the camera. We got our mount and this is a suction cup style mount so whenever you put this on you'll just turn this little collar that will pull the suction cup in and lock it to the window where it mounts we got a little thumb nut so we can loosen that up and then we can rotate that up and down to match whatever the angle of the window is and this will just slide in and you can rotate it left and right so you can have this pointing in whatever direction that you want to so here's our trim tool. So if you need to hide wires, you can use this to pop into the trim, pull it down, and then you can push the wire along the trim. So these things are fantastic. And the fact that they're a nice soft plastic means that you're not gonna be damaging your trim when you use it. We also have some wire clips so we can lock those cables into place. And we have an SD to micro SD adapter. So if you want to read that card using an SD card slot, you can use this to make that happen. Last thing is the instructions. And Ryder always makes a very nice full color instruction. So this can be very useful. So by default, we have the front camera on the left. We have the rear camera in the middle. and we have the cab camera on the right. I do like that you can see everything right there at the same time. And one thing that I found that I didn't realize at the beginning, there's a little switch on this rear camera. And if we take that and we switch that, it actually swaps side to side. That's very cool. So if you're putting this on and you need to mirror it, you can do that right with that switch. So we can see it is recording right there. If we want to lock the buttons, we just hit left and you can see we got that lock symbol up here. If we hit right, that will change the camera. So if we're going to, for example, back up, we want to see just the rear camera, we can do that. This is the front camera. This is the cab camera. And there is the rear camera. So it's very nice having that option. And I also just noticed that if you hit the power button quickly, that will just turn off the display. It will keep on recording, but you're not going to have that display on. So if you're driving at night and it's bothering you, you can turn that off. We have menu, we got resolution. By default, it's at 4K, 1080, and 1080. So the front camera is 4K, and then both of the rear cameras are 1080. We got loop recording. So this is going to change how long it is going to record those files for. I like five minutes. We can adjust the exposure. So if it's recording too dark, we can increase it. We got WDR, screensaver, parking guard, G sensor. By default, it's set to low. So we can set that off, high, medium, or low. If you have that on high and then you go over like a bump in the road, then it might automatically save the G sensor. All the G sensor is gonna do is going to save those files into a saved file that will not be overwritten. I personally like having this on low just because the G sensor on these, they're so sensitive that they have a tendency to just activate all the time if you have it on high, but you set that wherever you want it. Then we have audio recording, so we can turn that on or off. We have keypad sound, so if you don't wanna hear that beep, we can turn that off. You can hear no more beep. I kind of like having it on. Change the language, we can change the time and date. We can connect this to the app. We can change the Hertz. So right now it is at 60 Hertz or we can change it to 50 Hertz. So basically if you're using LED lights and it is affecting the camera, you can change the Hertz to make that better. Mirror rear image. So we can do that either physically with the camera or we can do that digitally with this if we don't want to go back to that camera. Mirror inside image. So we can do the same thing with this. We can change the band this is going to operate on. Night scene. Oh, that's cool. So if we don't want this to automatically turn to the black and white, we can turn that off. 
but it's really up to you. We can format the card and change it to the default settings. So if we mess something up and we just want to go back to how it was, we can use that. Check the version. We can change the speed unit. So by default, it's set to kilometers per hour. I want to use miles per hour. Daylight savings. So if your clock needs to be adjusted for daylight savings time, we can use that. GPS, you can turn that on or off. And time zone, I'm going to use minus eight. 